Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, this week I'm going to paint a lovely uh, snow scene. Lots of warm coloured in a snow scene. I hope you don't mind. Um, I'm doing a snow scene uh, a themed um, layout from, for the restaurant for Christmas. So all the paintings are going to be kind of Christmassy scenes, snow scenes, robin red breasts, um, a little bit of holly, so that kind of thing, I hope you don't mind. It's a beautiful snow scene, I've had it for a long time in my gallery, in my phone gallery, um, and I've just been itching to kind of get into it and give it a try. It's a beautiful scene, it really is. So I hope you enjoy it, um, do subscribe if uh, you haven't done so already, you're missing fantastic painting, really, really fantastic, uh, you know, nice chilled out kind of an atmosphere relaxed having a bit of fun along the way um, i think that works brilliant so look grab your stuff if you want to follow me along um, i'd be delighted if you do and show me how you're getting on as well just send me an email uh, you'll see the link below and um, also if you want to pop over to patreon to support me you can as well now we did one on patreon um, this week let me show you where did i put it we did a beautiful painting on Patreon this week. It's up around here somewhere. Ah, it's over here. Let me show you. So we did this. Let me move this. We done that lovely snow scene on Patreon this week. Isn't that just wonderful? Um, just learning about really creating an atmosphere in a painting. Lovely mist and that lovely silhouette of the trees then. Um, so we've done that on Patreon. If you want to support me, you can just pop over there. Um, there are lots more tutorials over there, okay? Just to... Uh, sorry. Keep you busy. Keep you busy painting. Right, let's crack on with this. Um, I'm looking forward to this. Don't go anywhere. Okay, here we go. There is that snow scene. Isn't that just wonderful? Really kind of bright colours hitting those trees. Sunlit kind of colours. Lovely browny oranges. Um, and I've complemented them with some kind of cool blues in the distance and in the shadows here in the front. I think this is going to be fantastic. And I have a frame and all ready for this. Now, the first thing I'll tell you is I have a 16 by 12 canvas, okay? I sanded it very, very lightly. And what I'm going to do next is, just to help me, because it seems quite dry. Now, I didn't prime it, okay? Normally, I would prime it with my own kind of water-based primer quickly but i like the dryness of the canvas to create some nice effects so i'm just going to leave it as it is and i'm going to just take some of my thinners which is turpentine with a little bit of linseed oil just poured in and it goes as kind of a yellowy color i'm going to put that on very quickly just around the canvas all right and you will see if you try this at home now you will see it helps the paint to flow lovely on the canvas. It really, really does, honestly. Now, and it just takes the dryness out of some of these cheaper canvases. Um, now, this is a kind of a budget canvas. Uh, it cost me, I think, six, six euros or something like that. Um, so I do like to just give it a something. You can use liquid clear as well if you like. It's very similar. But the difference is this linseed oil will almost kind of dry into the canvas. But when you put the paint on then, um, the oil in the paint sort of unlocks the linseed oil in the canvas and it brings it back out. And it just helps it flow lovely. It's really nice. Now, I'll tell you what colours I have. I may add one or two. I'm not sure yet. But this in general is the palette I would use for this kind of a painting, okay? Uh, titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow, burnt sienna, some phthalo blue, or French ultramarine would work as well, some alizarin crimson, burnt umber and black. Any kind of black you have will do fine, okay? I have some thinners in my jar, a tiny amount of thinners, I may need more actually, I'll put a drop more into it, and I have some blue paper towel as well. Okay, or tissue paper, whichever you prefer. A cloth even would do as well. Just a little bit of tissue. And that's it. And I have a handful of brushes, look. Large stubby, medium stubby, small stubby, another flat, a little pointy one, a fan brush for some texture. That, in general, is pretty much the only brushes I need. Um, I might use one or two smaller ones, but 
you know you don't need lots and lots of expensive brushes for painting by the way if you want these I can get a set of stubby brushes to you all right um, they're not like this they're brand new when they're when you get them they're sharp and pointed like this um, but you wear them in and they're fantastic for trees okay let's go a very bright blue sky on top um, I'm thinking should I use phthalo blue or should I use a little cobalt I am unsure hmm I might take a tiny amount of cobalt just for this sky okay I hope you don't mind Thalo would work as well, but Thalo is slightly kind of on the green side of blue. Uh, it's perfect for shadows and stuff like that, but for a sky, a winter sky, I'm thinking a nice soft blue. So cobalt blue. Let's just try it and see, okay? We can always add some Thalo if we want to. Let's take loads of white, okay? Now I have a damp brush, so I'm taking more turpentine, just a tiny amount of turpentine with plenty of white. And it's a nice, rich kind of a blue up on top, isn't it? So I may take more cobalt, and I might take a tiny, tiny hint of crimson, okay? Just the tiniest amount, really. And it's only just to warm it ever so slightly. Tiny bit more turpentine. Now, you can see everything here, okay, yes? I hope you can, I really do. Um, let's have a look at that now. Okay, that's not bad. I'll go for more cobalt up there. Now see how that's moving beautifully across the canvas just because it's only, it's not wet, it's actually dry, okay, look, it's completely dry, but it just, it gives the canvas a certain kind of an oily finish to it, it's really beautiful, and the paint just kind of glides along lovely, it really, really does. Now, later on I won't put any linseed oil down here because I want the dryness of the canvas to create nice trees. Um, it's tricky enough to create nice trees when your canvas is really wet and with lots of paint on it. So I will leave the dry section of the canvas down here later on, alright? Now it's up to yourself. If you have a different technique then that's fine as well. Now I want to lighten this an awful lot, okay? I want to put lots more white into this as it comes down. By the way, I actually forgot to do a quick sketch. Let me just put a very, very quick sketch in here. I'm going to start with this point here where the road comes, and it comes to about here, doesn't it? Now it goes up, and it turns slightly like that, and then it goes off in the shape of an S like that, doesn't it? And it'll go like that, comes out wide again like that. Would that be, in general, just a very loose kind of impression. So like that, and this bank falls kind of downwards, doesn't it, very slightly. And then we have the hill in the background. Let's just put a very quick kind of a hill in there. It's just a guide, so I know where to stop my sky. Now, I'm gonna give this a good damp, um, a dip in my turpentine and give it a good dry on some tissue, okay? Now, when I'm cleaning my brushes, what I mean is, I'm not, just so you know, okay, I'm not swirling it around like this, I'm just dipping it once, so it's soaking with turpentine, and then I'm letting the tissue soak off the paint. Now, see, all clean again. So by doing that, you're keeping your turpentine nice and clean inside in your little jar, all right, and it's not getting destroyed with paint right away now plenty of white I'm going to pop some white in here and i'm going to pull some of the blue then you see down into the white so you don't need to make a light blue you can just put white on your canvas and drag some of that blue down that's all you have to do nice and simple and i'm just kind of doing this quickly now in a kind of a crisscross fashion okay Crisscross, crisscross. It's just a very simple sky. No cloud. Just a very simple light blue sky. Nothing fancy. And I'm going to soften that in. And I'm going to go at a slight angle as I soften it up, okay? Because that just helps give you a little bit of direction in your sky when you're 
soft in colours like this. Just a little bit of an angle on the brush. You see what I mean? Now, we have a nice bright blue sky there. Simple, I'm going to leave it at that. Moving on, let's get this lovely distant hill area in. And again, I'm just going to very quickly sketch out the tree line because I want to keep the brightness of the trees, you see. And I don't want to be trying to cover these trees with lighter colour afterwards. So I'm just going to leave all this area clear, okay? And I come over to about here. So that's all the painting. That's the only part of the hill that we need to paint, okay? I'm going to take another small flat brush. Where did I put? Oh yeah, it's over here. Now you can use a medium stubby or you can even use your large stubby for this, but a nice small flat brush is plenty. And we have a very dark greeny colour. And that, for that I'm going to take some phthalo blue and some burnt umber. Now, I don't want this pure that very, very dark. I'm going to take a hint of white into that and a bit more of the blue, okay? Phthalo blue. So the phthalo blue with the brown will give you kind of a bluey green. And that's what I can see. I'm going to put maybe a hint of black into it, just a tiny hint. And a bit more of the blue. Because it's far away now, I want um, plenty of blue in this. A little more white. So it's a very... You see, it's a very distant kind of a greeny, grey kind of a colour. I may put an extra hint of brown and a hint of black into this. And it's, what I want to do is to, just to create a nice silhouette against that um, bright sky. That's all I want to do. I'm going to soften that in. Just go around my tree line very, very quickly, very roughly. I'll take a bit more black and a little touch more burnt umber. And I'm going to pop a suggestion of the lines of trees here and there. And you can see I'm using a very dry brush for this as well. So I'm just kind of scraping it into the canvas. You see what I mean? Now what I'm going to do next is just give that a quick clean. And I'm going to, um, hmm, let me see, I'm going to suggest some darker lines of trees with some black and a hint of burnt umber. Okay, now it's only a damp brush, okay? I'm just going to suggest just a suggestion of kind of rough foliage on some trees off in the distance there, okay? It's just an impression. Now, I'm using a stretched canvas today. Normally, I use a board, but I'm using a stretched canvas. It gives you a nice little bit of a bounce, okay? Uh, just to try something different, that's all. Now, I'm moving on to my small stubby. Nice little stubby, flat stubby brush. I'm going to take some of the white and the blue, and I'll take some crimson, and I'm going to pop some pale, bluey kind of snow colour in and off in the distance there, okay? So I'm going for a very soft kind of a mauve colour. I may have to get more blue in this. Yeah, I need more blue. So I go with phthalo blue and a little white and a hint of crimson. And generally, generally when I'm mixing like this, I take little amounts of the colour as I go. Now clean the brush again, then go back into your colour. Just a matter of constantly Cleaning your brush, okay? That's all. So let's pick up some more. In here. And I'm just kind of giving an impression of some of the snow off in the distance in some of those fields. That's all. You know, I'm not going crazy with detail. Okay, a lot of this is going to be covered, so you don't have to be too too fussy with all of this. All right. Now, okay, 
I think I'll leave it at that. Might even soften some of it in. And with a small pointy brush, I'm going to just give a slight hint of just some more kind of solid brush strokes here and there, okay? Just sort of adds a little bit more detail into the distance, that's all, you see? So we've done that, I think we're finished with that. Another thing I wanna do is, with a rough brush, I want to just soften some of this into the sky, okay? I wanna create a sort of a misty distant feeling up in the distance. So I'm just gonna soften some of that line back up into the sky, just very gently with a dry brush. Okay, maybe your finger as well, look. Create a nice distant kind of a hill. Off, way, way off. So that's that done. Next we're on to lots of warm color. Warm, warm, warm color. Um, now let me see. The first thing I'm going to do is, we have a little area down here. I wanna get that in. It's a very kind of a bluey color. So I'm taking some phthalo blue, some cobalt blue. I'll take a little white. Now, forgive me, I need to take a sip of my coffee, okay? Nice cup of coffee. You can't beat a nice cup of coffee, can you? And I'll take a little hint of crimson, and I'm gonna put this very strong bluey color. Now oh, that's a bit blue, it's a bit, it's a bit too rich. Add a bit of white into that. I'm gonna pop that color in. Just here, okay? Just to get this in first. Then I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna pop in some very bright color. So white with a hint of Naples yellow. And I'm gonna put that color in. Like that. And I'm gonna put a little bit of it in just around here and there, around the front where there's actual bright snow catching. Okay, now I'll leave it at that just for now. I just wanted to get that little piece done. We're moving on to trees next. Now, trees. You could use your medium stubby for this. Um, this is a bit big, I think. I may just block in all of the dark colors with this first, okay? So that color there now, what do you think? Well, I can see definitely burnt umber. Let's take a damp brush with some burnt umber. Let's take a little crimson and a little black, okay? Now into that, I might put a hint of Naples yellow, just a hint. Just to make it more of a pastel chalky sort of um, a finish to the color. So I'm gonna mix up plenty of this now. And good bit of turpentine. Some Naples yellow, some crimson, some burnt umber, and a tiny amount of black, just to give it a darkness, okay? And that color now, let me just have to take a look at that. Okay, perhaps a bit more black and crimson. I'm now gonna just fill in the tree line with that color. And leave this bright outline here. But in general now, I'm just going to fill in all of this area with this wonderful dark color. And this will give us a nice base to work on, put in nice bright colors. And one thing you will notice in this area, this kind of goes to a soft pale bluey kind of a color. So I'm gonna take some of that light blue, take some white, some phthalo blue, and some crimson. And I wanna soften that. Let's take some more crimson. Soften that in here. 
See, I've just been very loose with this. Very, very loose indeed. And I may take some of that colour and go up here as well. Just going up over the hill a little bit. Just bring it up slightly above that little line there. Just to soften it up. Okay. So now, you can see I have a nice kind of a shadowed area. I may take a little more pink actually. And add a touch more pink into this. Just here and there. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the reference photograph and I'm just kind of popping in little subtle colours here and there where I think I can see them. Does that make sense? That's all I'm doing. Now also we have a very bright sun over on this side, don't we? And we need to be very careful with that because we have a bright yellow sun and lots of blue around it. So what should we do? Let's have a go and try and get a nice rich bright sun in over here. With a very clean brush, I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and I'm going to take a hint of crimson. Okay. And with that, I'm just going to simply pop a nice warm circle of sun in here. And don't get this, don't try and get this too perfect now because most of this will probably be covered by our trees so don't try and get this perfect it's just a suggestion of the sun through the trees um, later on do you understand now clean that give it a very good clean on your tissue and then what i'm going to do is take some naples yellow a little bit of white touch of cadmium yellow and i'm going to lighten around that And then what I'm going to do is, very gently with my finger, I'm going to soften those together. And then I'm going to take more of the lighter colour, and I'm going to go around the outside edge with that. Basically, I want to create this sort of halo effect, and I want to sort of soften this outwards into the sky around it. So, just very gently, just taking the kind of the edge off of the paint, that's all. Now well, that will do. I think I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, if you find it's a, maybe a little bit too orangey, pop some yellow in. That'll brighten it up again. And perhaps even a hint of just white on its own in the centre. That will help give it that very bright, intense look just in the centre. Okay. Now, I'll leave it at that. The next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get the footpath in some of this snow and I'm just going to change brushes now. I'm going to take another brush for this. Let me see now, what could I use? Hmm. I will try my small stubby. Okay. Now let's get this colour, this lovely rich kind of colour. I'm going to take some white anyway i'm going to take this yellow so some cadmium yellow i'm going to take a hint of crimson now we end up with this sort of salmon peachy salmon kind of a color don't we let's just put this in put this in on the roadway for now i'm not too worried about detail off in the distance i'm just this is all going to be kind of faded into the background. I'm just worried about, well, I'm concerned about just getting all of this sort of filled in for now. That's all. Okay. Um, let's go there like that. Fill all that in. Then I'll switch to my bigger brush. So the bigger brush I used for the distant hills and stuff like that, this medium kind of flattish brush. Let's try that. Let's get some white, some cadmium yellow, 
a little hint of crimson and now we're going a bit more yellowy okay so I'm just popping some of the yellow in here and there let's try that again more yellow more white so you see you get two completely different colors when you mix cadmium yellow and crimson and naples yellow and crimson you get two completely different sort of uh, warm colors so for a sunlit kind of a footpath like this cadmium yellow and crimson are fantastic colors to use they really are it gives you a very um sunlit sort of a color it's fantastic so i'm just using those two colors here now cadmium yellow and crimson and i'm brushing in the direction of the footpath okay so your brush strokes will then give you an indication of the direction that the footpath is taking do you understand now let me get some more turpentine here so there's going to be quite a bit of work in this now even though it's only a small painting but we're going to enjoy it it's going to be fun um let me see let me have a look around here now and see i'm going to pop some richer color in here it needs to be quite a bit richer so i'm going to take more crimson cadmium yellow uh, i may even make this a bit more pinky as well because i can see it's a lot more pinky towards the left hand side and further down there's a lot of pink in that color okay and you can see i'm just flicking my brush up in that direction let's take a bit of this burnt umber color let's pop a little bit of this in just again to give us some direction you see just a little then i'm going to pop in some nice soft purple over here okay now i'm cleaning my brush i'm going to take some phthalo blue just a little some crimson and i'm going to put in more red in this mix here okay a little touch of white so it's a sort of a plum kind of a plum kind of a color nice plum i'm going to suggest the undergrowth over there okay just with this brush all right just like that now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take another small flat brush and i'm going to suggest the direction of this little hill this mound here you can see that little mound area we have there i'm going to paint that in so i'm going to put in some cadmium yellow some crimson naples yellow and plenty of white into this okay okay that's not bad i'm going up in the direction of the hill but it's not a hill it's just like a little mound of snow going up in that direction like that then i'm going to add more white little more cadmium yellow it's very bright in the distance here i'll we'll put plenty of it through there um, a little bit up there and I'll add some of that lighter color as well it's all about really getting lights and darks to work together um, without kind of conflicting the colors So you can understand kind of where I'm coming from. I hope you do. Get some pink. Get some pink going up here. There's a lovely pink over here. So what I'm going to do then is you see I'm going up like this. And I'm going to go back into that blue, okay? So it's turning. That makes sense? 
And you need to be very careful in this area because if you have a yellow by a blue, it's going to turn green. So the best thing to do is to mix a nice light pink with a hint of blue in it, okay? So if you have more red in the mix, it won't go green. You see what I mean? Let me take a bit more of the pink now. And I'm going to put a shadow. It's like a shadow going through the snow. Down like that. Another one here. Like that. And a little in the burnt cyanide. As it comes further up because they're getting quite warm. Now, does that make sense? I mean, it's starting to come together, isn't it, slowly? Now, I want to bring some light in here. So I'm going to take some of the lighter colour. Naples yellow, hint of crimson. And I'm going to just pull some of that lighter colour through here. And don't worry, we'll put in some nice strong shadows again in here in a moment, all right? So not to worry. Um, there's a nice rough kind of a textured surface down here. I'm going to go with pink. So some crimson, a little blue. Lots of crimson in this and a hint of burnt umber. And I'm going to put just some rough suggestion of some rough area just there with my brush you see just like that and I'm going to almost soften it over in here and then upwards okay and for me really it's all just about kind of messing around with the brush and seeing what happens do you understand what I mean? Um, you know, a lot of it is just take different types of brushes and just try it and see how it goes. Sometimes it doesn't always work, but sometimes you realize, oh, that's quite a nice technique. Do you understand? Now, I'm going to go with some nice dark lines up here, okay? You see? So it's that very dark plum colour I'm using. And get a bit more pink in here. Put a couple of small ones down. Take a hint of cyanide because they're getting more goldy and brown as they go further up there. So now, I'm going to leave that area just for now, all right? And I'm going to start focusing on the roadway. I'm going to use some of this plummy kind of colour just to give an indication of some rough lines on the roadway. You know what I mean? And I'm kind of just scraping it along the canvas here and there. You take a hint of burnt umber. I can see lots of burnt umber in this. So I'm just kind of creating the direction again of the road, you see what I mean? I'm following that road around. That's all I'm doing really. Now I'm going to put a slight dark bank up there, further up. I'm going to soften that off into the distance. So it almost disappears. And I'm going to put some of that nice dark colour um, just down here. There's a kind of soft bank where it just kind of comes down and disappears okay now the next thing I'm going to do is take some cadmium yellow with lots of white okay now lots of white in this I know I'm spending a lot of time now on just one side but I want really get it nice 
lots of white cadmium yellow and I'm going to just put in some real bright colours around here okay because there is some very bright yellowy whites just here and there just catching the light that's all okay that will do perhaps one or two just there let's move on and do these trees i'm excited about these and i'm going to use um i get a small brush now you could use a small stubby um if it's kind of worn nicely but i'm going to use this nice flat but it's kind of worn slightly it's slightly splayed out and i'm going to mix a nice color a dry brush now i'm going to take some cadmium yellow some naples yellow and a little crimson now perhaps a bit more yellow in this okay cadmium yellow and that's going to give me a very rich orangey kind of a color but i'm going to add a little crimson to it and maybe a hint of white it's going to take a while now to get this color just right okay and let me just try this okay now it needs a bit more cadmium yellow it's a bit more orangey actually let's try some of this orange here and i'm going to create first some highlights of the trees then i'm going to go along the top and create the tops of those trees okay and create the tops first let's get plenty of red in this then i'm going to soften it down into the dark color underneath okay i'll take a tiny bit more crimson it needs to be slightly warmer and i'm going to soften those down into the darker colors underneath okay you see that now as it comes across i'm going to add more pink into the mix because it's going to mix with the brown underneath anyway and create lots of lovely colors and let that kind of disappear off into the distance okay now how is that so far not a nice rich kind of a color we have there I'm going to take some crimson and I'm only using tiny tiny amounts of this color okay tiny amounts on the tip of my brush that's all and take some yellow and we have a very rich orangey kind of a color and I'm going to just add in one or two more towards the bottom as they come closer to us okay just like that isn't that lovely yeah I'm happy with that now I'm going to move on to the bigger one and I'm going to take my bigger brush for that make sure it's nice and clean and again let's go with lots of that colour so plenty of crimson plenty of cadmium yellow that gives us a nice orange doesn't it and then a hint of naples and the naples will just kind of soften that slightly you know what I mean and lighten it at the same time now let me try this okay now i'll take more naples yellow so i'm going to start with this light area here i'm going to just cover that in and I'm going to allow this then to kind of soften back into the darker colour if that makes sense so I'm just kind of dabbing left and right, left and right and the technique is I'm using the corner of my brush alright so I'm just kind of using one corner of my brush 
Does that make sense? There we go. Now I'm going to add more pink into it as it comes back and a little more Naples yellow because it gets kind of quite pinky up here, doesn't it? And just give a very loose suggestion of just some very loose light kind of foliage up here. Let's get more Naples yellow. You could use a fan brush for this now as well if you if, if, if you wanted to try the fan brush you could. That would give you a nice effect as well. I'm just going to soften these colours back into that dark, okay? I'm just very randomly going around and I'm going to soften that back in till it disappears pretty much. Now, how's that? So, let me just take a quick look at that now. Eh, that's not bad. Not bad at all. I might add a very bright colour just to the outside of this. Just to give it a bit more separation. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is start putting in a couple of tree trunks and that kind of thing and the tree trunks are really dark uh, pretty much just kind of black maybe and a little hint of crimson and I'm going to pop a couple of tree trunks in behind in there they're kind of hidden almost you can see them a little bit so it's nice I suppose just to put a hint of one or two in behind, would you agree? Bear in mind now some of these, a lot of these will be hidden with foliage. So not to worry, okay? And then we're going to put some nice light colour on these. Little Naples yellow with crimson. So they're just catching the light very slightly. Now, let's now switch. I'm going to switch to, hmm, let me see. I'll find another brush for my next step. Um, I'm going to go with, I should have another large stubby here somewhere but I can't find it. So I'm just going to go with another kind of a smallish flat, a medium kind of a flat brush. And I'm just going to start putting in some of that bright foliage. In fact, you know what now? The fan brush might be better for this. Let's try a, a little fan brush, okay? I have a new fan brush, dampen it slightly. Little pink, little yellow, uh, little Naples yellow. Let's try this. Yeah, it's not bad. Look, just give it a kind of a random feel. Okay, then I'm going to take a very small pointy brush and I'm going to actually paint some of those lighter colours with the pointy brush, okay? So that light colour with a little white, lots of thinners, I'm going to actually paint the branches with this brush, look. You see? Because they're sort of falling downwards and coming out into the light, aren't they? It's wonderful, really. 
and they come out in sort of clumps, so in like little groups. And let's put a couple more up higher. And I'm not going to go crazy with this now. This is just a nice impression of the scene. You know, you don't have to go crazy. You can take your time at home if you like and put in loads of these little, wonderful little branches. But I'm not going to go that far. I just want to create a nice simple scene for you to try. That's all. All right. Now, there we go. Let's add a couple of dark, a couple of dark uh, twigs and branches and stuff like that higher up. Now, that's fine. Absolutely fine. Um, there is another way you could create little bits of foliage. That's using your palette knife. All right, like this. So you could just grab some paint with your palette knife like that and just sort of give it a little scrape down at a slight angle. You see? It creates lo lots of lovely kind of texture as well. That's just another way you can do it. Okay, let's move along nicely. Um, I'm going to put a couple of dark let me get some of this dark blue so there is quite an amount of work in this painting isn't there I'm going to refine some of those and with my small fan brush I'm going to suggest a little bright colour just here and there the front of that kind of a bank there okay just very lightly like that now I'm going to move across and put in some nice shadows on this side over here I'm going to take my medium stubby brush you could work from top to bottom if you want, but I'm going to just put in the shadows as I'm here. I'm going to take some crimson, little phthalo, a little white, just a tiny amount of white. So I have a nice kind of a plum colour here. And all of this here in that nice plum colour. And it does look a bit more blue on the photograph, so let's maybe add a touch of cobalt into this. Again, this is just kind of the undercoat of the colour, that's all. Because we're coming out into a yellow colour here, I'm going to put a lot more pink in the colour. So it's more of um, a ready plum rather than a blue. Do you understand? Does that make sense? So coming out, like so. little more pink little more white so as it comes out then into the warm sunlit colour it goes from this lovely cool bluey mauve to um, a warm pink and then a kind of an orange so I'm just putting simply just putting more pink into it as it comes out Okay. Now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to soften that in just ever so slightly. So just bear with me. I'm going to just soften that down very slightly. Then I'm going to take a smaller brush and I'm going to make some nice warm colour. Let's go up here and take some of this nice warm orangey colour and I'm going to finish it with a suggestion of that colour there a 
you kind of get what I'm doing now, yeah? You can kind of sort of see the painting kind of slowly come together. I know we're taking our time now, and it's, but it's slowly coming together, isn't it? And here and there, inside and centre, you could push a hint of light popping through some of the shadows here. Now I'm going to make it slightly bluer inside here. So I've just taken a hint of phthalo blue. And then I'm going to take some phthalo blue with some white and a hint of crimson. And I'm going to put that colour falling downwards back here, okay? So I'm using the dryness of the canvas now, you can see the canvas is quite dry. So I'm going to use that to my advantage and I'm going to put some of that blue across into the shadow here as well. So now, we have this wonderful little shadowed area over here. We take some more white, some phthalo blue, some crimson, and I'm gonna just pop that in around here. a little bit of white just to create a bank so just to create the edge of the roadway here that's all you see what I mean it's just a kind of a case of messing around with it really and um, just kind of having a bit of fun you know it's just it's kind of difficult to explain. You have to just uh, try different kind of things and see what happens, you know? All right, so I left that like that. Quite nice. I'll take a bit of black, just add a bit of black along the bank like that. Just very loosely. I'm going to move on to these trees over here. Now with these ones, um, there's just lots of big thick trees on this side, isn't there? So, I start with the smaller ones around here. I'll just take my medium flat brush. I'll take some, you see now, ba -ba -bum, some crimson, little black, some Naples yellow, Let's try that now. Yeah, that's not bad. I'll go with that for now. I'll just pop some of that in here. And fill this in. And I'm being careful now around by the sun here. So I'm going to take some Born Sienna with a little crimson. And I'm going to go up around the sun with that colour. And I might even just sort of dab here and there. Then I'll take some cadmium yellow with crimson. And I'll go up here and put that nice rich color in just around by the sun. Then I'm going to put a very bright colour with white and yellow just around that sunny area there, okay? 
thus giving us the impression of the sun coming through the foliage. All right? Now, there we go. As it comes down, I'm going to just start darkening it slightly. So I'm getting rid of all that yellow out of my brush. And I'm going to take some phthalo blue. Now let me just get a clean area on my palette, okay? So some phthalo blue, some pink. Very messy palette today, yes? Very, very messy palette, I must say. But that's good because we have so much colour going on in this painting. Let me take some crimson. A lot, a lot of crimson in this now. And some white. Oh, I have this lovely plum kind of a colour. And I'm going to come down here and soften that in all the way down. I'm just looking at colours on the photograph. So sections of colours, wherever you see sections. And I'm just kind of popping them in. So I'm going to just soften this one up here. Just sort of let it dance around. I'm going to soften it up into that lovely warm colour just a little. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is pop a little bit of foliage in. Some nice bright foliage. Again, with some crimson, cadmium yellow. And I'm leaning more towards the red side this time. So plenty of crimson in this. And let me just see now what colour I have here. Okay, it needs to be a little bit brighter. A little bit more Naples yellow. And a little bit more pink. And I'm going to create some little bits of foliage just in the background. That's all, okay? Before I start painting all my lovely big tree trunks and stuff like that. Um, pop a little bit in here. Let that then disappear down into the darker colour. I'm going to go very bright then, just for around the edge here, okay? Where the sun is catching the tips of the foliage. Now, now I know the colours aren't exact, but they're not supposed to be exact, okay? We're making this our own, and we're having real fun, plenty of fun with it. So we find some of that there. And I'm going to start putting in now some nice thick tree trunks, okay? Let's work on these trees and get some of these in. First of all, I suppose we could, um, let me see now, we could just pop in some branches and stuff like that in the background first. So with my little rigger brush, I'm going to just pop in some little twigs and branches and small little tree trunks, that kind of stuff, just here and there. Okay. There's a lot of trees going on around here, isn't there? A huge amount of them. So let's just put it in very quickly and then just, again, indicate a little bit of foliage on some of those. Just to break them up, that's all. We could Actually, we could also push some light bluey ones in. Wrong brush. Let's get some of this light blue and pop some of those in. Here and there. Now let's get some real dark colour. Let's come some real nice thick black paint and a hint of crimson, okay? Lots of turpentine in this and I'm going to start 
Uh, let me see now. I'm going to put one up just along the side of the sun. Okay. And then I'm going to put another one. Another big black one. Very thick. Up here. Like that. And use plenty of turpentine in this, okay? It'll help the paint move really nicely. And that one there. And I always taper them outwards at the bottom because it helps give you the feeling that the tree can support all of that weight, that the trunk can support it. So let's go along now and let's have a bit of fun with some branches. Let's get cracking. Bring some of these big thick branches right out over the painting, creating a lovely canopy. And I'm just going to use this brush now only for the thicker parts and I'll move on to my smaller detail brush then in just a moment. And I'm not going to copy the photograph exactly, I'm just going to kind of put a quick representation of some um, trees in here, alright? You can add to this yourself and put loads and loads of trees and branches and twigs like that. Um, take your time, but I'm kind of pressed for time with the tutorial, so I just need to bear that in mind. Um, I'm just kind of show you very loosely how to kind of keep going with it. So just popping something like that, keeping it simple. I'm going to thicken this tree trunk here. that and what I'm going to do then is just where the sun is I'm going to put a nice rich orange on that tree trunk okay so just where it's kind of passing that sun I'm going to put a nice rich orange just on the tree the tree trunk itself you see what I mean And perhaps a little bit here as well. So it needs to be an orange now, okay, not a yellow. Just a nice rich orange. There we go, that's a bit better. So you can kind of see now what I'm just trying to get at. Um, I'm going to use my smaller brush for this just to get a lot more fine lines in. And let's go and put lots of these little branches in all over the place. And really go to tone with this. You could put a little hint of foliage on this if you wanted to. I may still put some of that on. Um, but I'm just trying to get lots of these little twigs on the tree. And we'll go and put some snow on these as well in a moment. Now, let's try a bit of snow. Let's mix a nice snowy colour for this, a shadowy snow colour. So some phthalo blue and some white. And plenty of phthalo in this, okay? With a hint of pink. And let's just go in here and pop some of that on. Here and there. 
particularly on some of the branches. And you see, it just sort of kind of brings it to life, doesn't it? It's fantastic, it really is. And just try and keep it simple. That's what I say is, I say this to, I say this to everyone really, to try and keep it simple. Sometimes simple is best. Um, you know, look, you can take your time and spend hours and hours doing this if you like. And that's completely fine also. But, um, you know, just try and, if you can, just try to keep it as simple as you can. So I'm just going to, see, just give it a little bit of texture here and there, inside there. Okay. And I'm going to just thicken that just a little. Now what I want to do is just add some light here and there in the distance so I can see there's some very bright colours. Very whitey yellows there over here. I just want to pop some of those in. Maybe a hint more cadmium yellow. Just to really show off that light, that's all I want to do. And I'm going to pop some in around here as well. I'm going to pop a couple around here. I think it's just a matter of being very careful around your blues. Um, try not to put too much yellow in around by your blues. Because you will end up getting a nasty kind of a green colour going through the painting. And you will not be happy. It'll, it'll overpower the painting. So just be careful, just be aware of that. Now, let me just soften some of these away there, look. And get a bit more yellow. Through here. So we have a rather nice little scene, don't we? Now what I'm going to do is take a little fan brush and I'm going to add just a little bit of light here and there to that, okay? So I just want to create a bit of a bank coming down like so. Okay. And I really am just trying to keep this nice and simple for now. You know, I, I probably will add little bits to this as I go. Um, but in general, I'd be happy enough. Um, you know, as I said, add little bits here and little bits there, if you wish. It's completely up to yourself. So look, little bits of detail here and there. Um, pop little dabs of snow in. You see what I mean? Just kind of adding little touches. Uh, okay, I could just add a little touch of white here and there, just to bring those out just that little bit. Um, 
And I'm just going to leave it at that. I just want to keep it simple, that's all. Okay? I do want to just keep it nice and simple. I don't want to go into too much um, kind of fussy detail with all this. So, with that in mind, I would like to thank you very, very much indeed. Um, how about putting a little touch of foliage on this? What do you think? That kind of orangey colour just to complement it? What do you think? There's something else I see, you know, because as I keep looking around, I keep seeing little things that I don't like. So, I suppose you could call it doodling or whatever. But there are just little touches. How about putting a person on the footpath? How about doing something like that? Let me just lighten that just a little there. Yeah, we could put a little person, the impression of somebody walking along the footpath, in silhouette perhaps. Let's try that. Let's take some burnt umber and a little black. And let's just imagine there's someone in the distance walking away from us. Okay. How's that? And we give him a nice rich dark bluey kind of a shadow. And then I'll soften that back. Ah. That's brought a bit of life into the painting now, hasn't it? And a hint of light. There we go. And as we were saying earlier, a little touch of foliage on the right hand side, perhaps. So crimson and a little yellow. And just a touch, touch of it, just here and there. Have some Naples yellow as well. And even a little around here, just to break it up, look. And my friends, I will leave it at that. I just kept it nice and simple. Uh, let me have a look around now and see what could we do. We could perhaps add a little more. How am I doing for time? No, I'm not doing too badly for time. I have 10 minutes of recording time left on my camera. How about that? Okay, take a little warm colour. Just add a little warm colour. There and there. Uh, hint of Naples yellow. That. We could, let's see now, let's see. Uh, we could take a little black and add little small branches and things like that around here just to make it look busy. You know what I mean? That's kind of, that's all really. It's just to make it look busy. And you could even strengthen some of this shadow here as well. You see? Just give it a bit more power. Coming down. Add a bit of black in on this side down here. And, my friends, I think I'll leave it at that. Let's pop a little bird in. I think every painting needs a little bird, doesn't it? Up there. 
and I'll stick my name on it. Let me get some white. And we also have a frame. A frame which I made earlier. Let's try this now and see what we have created. And look at that. Isn't that wonderful? And there you are. One nice snow scene. Let me zoom in slightly so you can see. And isn't that wonderful? And there we go. So my friends, put that down there and turn the camera. I hope you enjoyed it. That was fun, really fun. Working with warm colors and cool colors. It's a little tricky. I wish I had more time to just spend more time on it and just really add some little details. I still will kind of go at this now and add small details to it. But in general, it's just a nice, easy scene to paint for you. Just try it. Put your own little twist on it. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week. God bless you all, my friends, and uh, happy painting.